Hello. Thank you very much for coming to my talk. This is Machine Learning with Kubernetes. I'm very excited to be the first presenter here at Kubernetes Day. Um, it's great to he be here in Boston. Uh, so who am I? My name is Christopher M. Luciano. I'm part of the, I'm a part of the ed open source technology team um, at IBM Digital Business Group. I'm blessed with being able to work on Kubernetes full time. I mostly concentrate on SIG node and SIG network. My GitHub handle is on there and my Twitter ID. Feel free to tweet uh, during the keynote, but please make sure to add the underscore. CM Luciano on Twitter founded some junket service. He's a lot more successful than I am, and uh, he doesn't need the PR, but I do. So make sure to keep the underscore in there. I have a very unsuccessful blog for some reason. Um, I'm hoping to fix that pretty soon. Uh, so check back later on. I'll be posting some more stuff on there. So a, a lot of talks talk about some of the more technical things, how to set up things, how to uh, twist some of the knobs, how to tune things. But not a lot of talks talk about the who and the why. So uh, I've coined a series of talks by myself, what's from calling the what, where, and why series. So why do I want to use these types of technologies before actually using them? When we talk about machine learning, it's very important to note what we're trying to accomplish here. Uh, with machine learning, it's very important to uh, get the most accurate results possible. So if we have a traditional bell curve, that's garbage. We, we don't want anything like that. So we're going to continually train our system to, get, to eke out the best possible accuracy that we can. So the goal, we're starting with some sort of a base knowledge. We have points of analysis, a corpus of unstructured data. Then we feed that into our system. We notice the errors, we correct, we rinse and repeat. It's a cycle. So take, let's take a very simple example. This is my cat, Sprinkles. Um, she has very distinct features. If you notice, her ear is very pointy. If you notice her feet, you know, they come down, they connect. The shape of them is very uh, similar to that of her paws. You could kind of see her tail, not really make it out. But what we're highlighting here are some of the features that say that this is a cat. You know, we figured uh, a few different data points, and this is some of our base knowledge we're going to be feeding in. So we move on again. Here's another picture of sprinkles. A little darker, but we could still make out pointy ears. We have a circular face. We can see her feet. Maybe we start to notice some more patterns about the system. We get to here, we notice myself, my fiance, and a penguin. We ask the system, is this a cat? Well, I don't see any of the features that I noticed before. I don't see the circular face. I don't see the tail. I don't see the fur. I don't see the small nose. I don't see the pointy ears. This isn't a cat. Is this a cat? I have a short snout. I have a circular face. The eyes are closer together. I don't see a tail, though. There's no fur. Not a cat. Here's a dog. Let's uh, assess the features of this. Do I see pointy ears? Not really. The face doesn't seem right. The fur doesn't seem right. The legs do come together, uh, but the paw just seems a little too uh, wide. Not a cat. What is this? So here we have uh, a sloth, does our system know what that is? Maybe not. What it does know is it has a smaller face. It's uh, circular in nature. It has a, a smaller nose, a distinct mouth. There's fur, the feet seem to come together. Everything's kind of coming together. It kind of looks like a cat. So in this instance, our, our system might become confused. And this is where we would see uh, on our rate that maybe we'll have a jump and uh, we'll have some like false uh, or false negatives or false positives, sorry. So this is where we would have to come in and, and kind of retrain our system to distinguish maybe some more advanced features of a cat. Because all, in the end, I just want to go online and find more cats for sprinkles to have friends. So I'm going to here, oh, we found another cat potentially. So we, we notice the pointy ears, you notice the circular face. It's a little harder to see, but this is sprinkles again. 
we notice the long tail. Is this a cat? If we have many cats. But did we tell our system that we might be expecting many cats? I don't know. Once again, another opportunity to come back around and train the, the system. So you might be thinking, like, what, what, why would I care about this? This is a very useful example. I already have a ton of cats. I don't need any more. Why don't you give me something I can work with here? So IBM first started its uh, kind of foray into some of the more public AI knowledge with Watson. Uh, prior to IBM uh, Digital Business Group, I worked on Watson for two years. This is why I'm here today. So Watson started out on our uh, ever famous power machines here. Um, if you watched it, I uh, encourage you to do so. If you have not, you know, instead of beat Ken Jennings uh, at his own game, essentially. <laughs> Um, but this also isn't very useful for the, the common person, unless you're really trying to impress your friends every day, invite them over for Jeopardy, only to dominate them with uh, Watson. This isn't a very effective method for you to, to utilize. So we can see that Watson started off uh, as that research project. There was a demonstration at uh, Jeopardy. Then some of the more advanced features of Watson started to be separated out into smaller services. So uh, first off, we started in healthcare, moved on to financial services, and then it kind of ballooned to such that we had a ton of services. So the Watson Developer Cloud is something exposed through the IBM Cloud today. These are services you can hook into and are using some of these key points of the older Watson application that are actually useful to you. What are some uses that you can think of for these uh, smaller examples? Well. If you look at text-to-speech, tone analyzer, speech-to-text, some of these things can be used for use cases that are very simple. If you have a podcast and you want to have uh, captions at the end, or if you want to print out all of that in an easy fashion, you can have that information at the end. You can provide that to your podcast consumers. Some of the more interesting examples that people have used uh, for tone analyzer or emotion analysis uh, there's been cases that people were experimenting with for determining if someone was lying based on the tone of their voice or based on some of the, the known like lying indicators. Another interesting example uh, that I found uh, being used in IBM today is for security. You know, intrusion detection systems also have a corpus of knowledge. They note uh, cases that they know about as far as does this look like a security breach or not, they'll classify it, and then maybe if you have a intrusion prevention system, they'll try to actively block that. But attacks are getting so advanced today that it's necessary to potentially incorporate artificial intelligence in order to detect and note newer types of attacks. You know, zero days come out every single day and it's almost next to impossible to block every single one of them. Let's so now we'll get into like, how can I do this myself? Uh, these links, I'll provide the slides, obviously you can't click on these now, but we're gonna start with GPUs. So you're gonna need a machine that exposes GPUs. GPUs are being leveraged because of the amount of cores. These training jobs take a long amount of time. So you can have the case where you, you think you're gonna have a short iterative solution, spin up some GPU virtual machines or bare metals, do your training, and then tear them down. But often case, if you, you know, note a lot of the examples that we had with cats, with dogs, it takes a lot of time to train your system and to note these things and to error correct. So it's not uncommon for these jobs to take weeks, months even. And Kubernetes is gonna help you uh, to cut out some of the corner cases you'd have to deal with if you're deploying this on the bare metal directly. TensorFlow is also an interesting project that has come out of Google that allows you to leverage some of these more advanced APIs. You don't need to build it yourself. Uh, there was also examples of deploying TensorFlow atop Kubernetes. Now I know you're thinking, there's a lot going on here. I've got stacks on stacks on stacks. If I'm going all out, I start off with the bare metal. Then I put some OpenStack on it. Now a virtual machine. I deploy a containerized runtime, Docker, Rocket. Then I put Kubernetes on it. Then I put TensorFlow. There's a lot going on here. 
And uh, I can understand uh, cutting a lot of these out myself. Sometimes you want to cut out the open stack, cut out the open stack. You want to cut out the TensorFlow, you want to do this yourself, go for it. But I want you to think of an Irish breakfast. You know, when I'm eating my Irish breakfast, I'm not going to eat the blood sausage without the pork sausage. The toast perfectly complements the eggs. I wouldn't want it any other way. So when you're thinking about these systems, Think about how Kubernetes can help you to better deliver some of these machine learning training systems. So this, these, uh, the information that I'll present in the next following slides, hot off the press. Some of these proposals were just discussed last week in SIG node. But some of the characteristics of GPUs that is important to note that distinguish them from other types of resources. We'll go into each of these right now. Multiple video cards. So one, one uh, node one blade could have a ton of different video cards. You could even potentially have different models of video cards in there. You have some faster ones. You have some slower ones. You have some purpose-built ones for a certain topology. So Kubernetes is going to help you out with this by allowing you to use oh, that's in the next slide, a, a node selector. And I'll discuss that in a couple more slides. But allow you to specifically target the exact GPU that you want. There's a lot of discussion going on in the community about exposing topology up through Kubernetes so that you can target the exact topology that you want. Um, but in the next few slides, I'll show you ways that you can get around that to do the right thing the first time. Driver installations. If you're using NVIDIA cards, you need to install the drivers. Uh, these are proprietary drivers, and you're going to get these from NVIDIA's website. An important thing to note, though, is the driver version on the host uh, most often needs to match whatever you're deploying in your container, whatever workload. If you don't, they clash, you get a weird error message, nothing works. So when you're matching driver versions, you want to be sure that version 2 of the driver matches up with version 2 of your container. This match is bad. You can deploy these things with the Kubernetes daemon set, and the Kubernetes daemon set will essentially deploy a target across all of your nodes, do whatever work necessary, so when you spit up new nodes, it's automatically going to install these things for you. Now, there is uh, some confusion around, do I need to reboot the machine? Um, the official docs say that in NVIDIA that you should reboot to uh, grab all of the latest kernel modules prior to utilizing the machine. I've seen uh, mix and match. Sometimes you have to reboot, sometimes you don't. Certainly on my laptop, it says I had to reboot when I installed the NVIDIA drivers. So uh, you might find discrepancies. So as I said before, you have multiple video cards. Kubernetes allows you to have a node selector in order to target the specific video cards you want. You have some Tesla 100 P100s in there. Go ahead and target that right here. And the latest pointer. Down here, you're saying uh, how many GPUs that you want. And this is a, a normal pod spec that you're going to be using to deploy out whatever system, like TensorFlow or your application-specific solution. The link down here will show you this example and show you a little bit of base knowledge about that. Resource fragmentation is also a big thing. So as I said, these jobs take a long time to run. So you want these always to run on time as fast as possible with the most correct results. If you are consistently working around slower systems uh, in your data center, maybe you have some older nodes mixed with the newer nodes, you're always going to want to target the newer nodes if this is an important job. Like I said, these take weeks, months. So here's some experiments that our research team has gone through as far as testing the Intel quick path interconnect versus some of the more advanced hardware features like NVLink. And the important thing to notice here is the huge bump in what you're able to achieve performance-wise when you get down to using something like four GPUs with NVLink enabled. And this, as I mentioned, is a specific topology, very specific to GPUs. Kubernetes is trying to figure out how to use topology in a way that you don't have to necessarily expose that to the end user because it increases complexity. And people that just want to get a job done will have to figure out how to use that. It could get a little messy. GPUs fail in different ways, and it's not always a hard failure. 
Sometimes it just gets too hot in there. If you're running a training job and you're just grinding away at it, the fan may start to overheat. You're, start gonna, you're gonna start to get inconsistent uh, builds, insufficient power problems, what have you. I have an example of uh, an error message as you might see when, when it happens here. In a normal node setup, if you have one card in your blade that fails, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna go in there and hot swap it out? Are you just gonna uh, see if it's just fine in the end? What Kubernetes is gonna do is gonna proactively mark this as unavailable, and it's going to only target the working GPU. So at your leisure, you could come back, fix it again. This type of uh, performance and problem analysis is active in the node problem detector, and we're starting to uh, add some pull requests to Kubernetes to actively do that blocking. However, if a node is just completely dead, your job will get migrated over somewhere else. So in Kubernetes 1.6, just released a, a few weeks ago, a lot of uh, work went into trying to make the GPU experience a little better. It's officially reached the alpha stage, so you can have multiple pods on your nodes. A pod in Kubernetes is just your unit of work, really. Video card discovery, it's doing a little better, and now it's using some uh, fancy regex to figure out any active video cards that it can expose. The basic failure rec recovery, as I mentioned, is in there. The only problem, at the moment, it only works with Docker, and it only does this because of some very interesting handoff between the kubelet trying to figure out what containers are actively using things. This is something that's gonna come in future versions. So where are we going with GPU in Kubernetes. We're gonna start with the device recovery. It is very important to be able to segment off one card and allow that job to continue somewhere else. That's where the health checking features come in. Topology, as I mentioned before, you can just full stop, allow the user to configure these things themselves. However, if you schedule it right the first time, Kubernetes has a degree of quality of service features. So a best effort is, I just want this to run. If it fails a few times, if I can't get my resources right now, it's fine. Burstable, this is starting out with these uh, resources, this amount of CPU, this amount of RAM. However, it might creep up to this limit, in which case I want you to cut it off. Or guaranteed, that's where you know how this application works, and Kubernetes is gonna do its best to almost always guarantee those resources for you. Now, if you bubble up topology to the guaranteed level and you say, I want this thing to be guaranteed to have these things, building a topology to that is a, is a, a lot more consumable for, for a user. Then they don't even need to know about what the best topology for GPUs are. They're just gonna be assured that because of the base knowledge you know about GPUs, that they're gonna get that every time. That's another thing we're, we're gonna work on. Metrics, as always, a good thing. Kubernetes utilizes C Advisor for every container that it's spinning up, so it's gonna give you metrics per container that you launch in there, and it's also gonna give you metrics node by node. Some cleanup features that we wanna do, we wanna make it work with things that are not Docker. There was a significant effort in one, Kubernetes 1.5 to attempt to abstract out a lot of these things into the container resource interface so that you can pass the same amount of base information to Kubernetes and deploy a VM, deploy a rocket container, deploy Docker, whatever you want. Last week, uh, we met with a lot of people from NVIDIA. NVIDIA is having their conference this week on the other side of the country. But they're gonna help us out with some of the libraries where they try to constrain some of their best practices by NVML and their newest edition, LibNVIDIA container. So this will be something that the kubelet, which is the worker node of Kubernetes, will call out to to gain this functionality. So, um, that's basically the end of my talk. I apologize, I did put at the end that I was going to have a demo for deploying Kubernetes on top of OpenStack, but I noticed there's like five to 10 talks that are only targeting that. I didn't want to steal the material. So I will deploy, uh, well, I'll, I'll send up a blog post on the IBM code page with an example if you really wanted to see my specific example later on. Uh, but come talk to me about these things. I'm very interested if anyone has high-performance computing use cases, especially if you're using GPUs. I also work in the networking space on Kubernetes. 
Tell me about any features that you'd like to see in there. I'm especially interested in multiple interfaces within a, a container and also multiple networks that you want to tie. Also, any other cloud native computing foundation projects that you want to talk about, great. If you just want to talk about anything, you're just looking for a friendly face, a couple of topics. I know a, a, a bit about cars, coffee, cooking, fishing, world culture. Come up, ask me about that if you want to ask about a non technical topic. Questions? Go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the presentation. Uh, I have a question. In my area, um, GPU is less interesting, but the networking part is way more interesting because I'm basically working with the service providers and they are looking into the networking performance. Uh, is there any plan to do something similar for in, in the Kubernetes environment to support something similar to GPU but for the networking cards? Yes. Well, within IBM directly, we're working on uh, that use case where it's node to node. So a lot of the performance is based on more of the network. Uh, some of the more advanced networking features that you see in combination with GPUs is infinity band from Intel. Uh, this relates to some of the topology work. We're trying to get it right at the node level first before we move on to inter-node communication. Uh, Scheduling on the network takes place in a kind of an upstream, um, potentially soon to be CNCF project. A lot of those networking things happen in the container network interface, which is a separate project where a lot of these plugins come together in order to achieve some of those advanced things. So a lot of the hope is to um, place a lot of that knowledge in those plugins and allow you to chain those together to get what you are trying to achieve. Uh, this both supports a more clean code base for Kubernetes, but still will potentially allow you to achieve those same results. All right, thank you. Other questions? Nope. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you have a great day. Uh, just my information again up on the board, cmluciano underscore, unless you want the junket guy. GitHub.com, CM Luciano, see what I'm working on. I'll be at the CNCF booth and also floating around the IBM booth. I look like this if you're trying to find me. Thank you. <laughs>